For Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is the CEO for National Employers Association of South Africa, Gerard Papenfus, to discuss State of the Nation Address. So Gerard, uh, President Ramaphosa's State of the Nation Address was a strong call for economic growth and investment. Why were you so critical of the speech? You know, we need to put South Africa in, onto an uh, entirely new trajectory. We know that the, the government's ability to execute on their promises is, uh, is extremely limited. So when the president goes down and gives us a checklist of all the things that he wants to do, then I'm a bit skeptic because who's going to do it? We've heard a lot of things that need to happen, but you know, that's actually, there's actually nothing really working in South Africa. The experience is, is bad. We, we don't see things working, almost everything. Every state institution is failing. All in- entities in which government is involved is failing. The execution capacity is almost zero. So we need to change that before mm. we can convince the world that, listen, we are a society with a future. We need to change that. And I didn't hear that vision by the president. I heard, you know, we, you know, we asked for investment, and, but, you know, anyone can do that. As a president, he need to tell us how he sees South Africa. What's he going to do about the fact that we have 28 million people living on forms of grants, social benefits, while the tax base is 5 million people? How is he going to sustain that? What are we going to do to change the attitude of people to say, I want to get back to work. I want to work. I don't want to live on 350 rand a month. I want a job. I don't want to sit at home and do nothing. I want to work. What is he doing to make it easier for business to create work. What is it? What is he going to do to make business feel welcome in South Africa? There are billions of rands lying outside of South Africa, which can come back if business feels welcome. If business doesn't feel welcome, then they will not bring the money back. You can't talk about inviting investment and then uh, uh, be involved with uh, expropriation of property. And he says in the same speech where he wants to invite uh, business, he talks about expropriation measures, initiatives. What is he going to do about cadre deployment? Race-based policies, and it's more than race-based. It is loyalists being appointed that can't do the job. What is he going to do to get the government services to render a proper service to the public? to restore pride in, in government services. Now, he's, he's not talking about these things. We need to turn the country around. We mustn't make a list of all the things to do because he's not going to do it. If we check him a year from now, we, we will see that 90% of what he's promised has not been done. That is my prediction. We need to change the attitude of South Africa to make this a proper functioning society. And I haven't heard a word mm. about that. You've called for fresh approach and a new attitude. What does Niasa think needs to be done exactly by our government? First of all, the attitude of the populace towards being South Africans, to do business honestly, to strengthen the family life. Education needs to change. So we need to start from ground level. Municipalities change need to change the style of doing business. The poor orders that municipalities get, there needs to be, something needs to be done about it. They need to hear if you don't do your job as a municipal official, then you need to be, then you need to go. You can't stay there. We cannot accommodate non-performing government officials. Actually, getting high wages, government officials nowadays are paid much more than the private sector. But really, they are not measured against proper performance measurements. The bar is extremely low and we need to hear from the top, from the president, that that needs to change. In each and every municipality, performance structures need to be put in place. And those that's not performing need to start performing. That's not only municipalities, in government service as well. The defense force is falling apart. We don't have a defense force anymore, but there's billions pumped into uh, defense. Where is it going to? What is happening with our money? If a road is built, public is skeptic. They say, you know, this build can be built for a hundred million, for instance. I'm just mentioning a figure. 
But mm-hmm. 300 million is pumped into that construction and it's not lasting. Why is that? Why mm-hmm. isn't the best guy for the job not uh, obtained to perform that function? So we need to get rid of our race-based stuff. You know, our race-based policy is an insult to the people of South Africa. We don't need race-based policies to employ people other than whites. Man, they're good enough to do it without it. The seventh team, rugby team in South Africa shows you don't need quotas to get good people. We have the good people. We have them. We just need to get them there. But being aligned to a political party must not be the criteria. When government talks about construction and and, and infrastructure development, we're skeptic. We say, is it really going to go for that? Is every infrastructure job going to go at the best bidder, the best, most most qualified bidder, at the best price? Or is there money that will be um, added to the, the tender to feed the pockets of politicians and the ANC? We are skeptic and we say it's our tax money. We want that to change. And you know what? As long as if that doesn't change, we have a problem. We will not be able to fix South Africa. And you know what? The change needs to come from the top. And I don't hear that from the president. He's talking about it, but we don't see action. The world is waiting and the world is skeptic. The private sector is very skeptic. The world is skeptic. Here's the thing in investment. What are the the deals for investment? What's the conditions? To what extent are we selling our country? And you know, you can get billions of investments, but it comes with conditions. And if you don't comply, they will claim and demand a pound of flesh. We need a new heart in South Africa. And we want to see that from the politicians. Unfortunately, we don't see that from the politicians. The corrupt are still there. They're still there. They're not supposed to be there. And you are also critical of the social grants, except for those uh, paid to the sick people as well as to the pensioners. Don't you think that South Africa needs to do something to assist millions who find themselves unemployed? I understand that you need to help. I'm not saying that stop paying that immediately, but it's not sustainable. Well, the tax base is shrinking. The dependence on the state for a living is increasing. So I'm not saying stop paying it now. I say, what are we going to do to get people back to work, to to expand the capacity of the private sector, to make it easier to create business, to do business and to employ? Because if you do that, then we can, we can change it around. So that's not a measure of just stopping it tomorrow. I'm saying work towards stopping it. We need a 6% unemployment rate. So, you know, when people aren't working, I say help people. But we cannot boast about how many people we pay. That is nothing to be boasted of. It shows that you are failing as a state to have 50% of your people not being employed. That's nothing to be proud of. That's nothing to be proud of. That's something that you must be ashamed of. So, yes, I'm, I'm not suggesting cut it off tomorrow. I'm saying we must work towards the point where people go back, get up in the morning, get up early and go to work. Find and there must be a place to go to work too. And you must be easy, eager to get up and go to work. That is a South Africa that can prosper not a country where we boast about how many people we pay in social grounds. I want to know if Niasa has given hope or by the recommendations uh, of the Zondo Commission that uh, those who were involved in corruption would face justice. Well, let's see. There's an amount, uh, a certain amount of skepticism whether that's actually going to happen. Uh, let's see. If that happens, it will be wonderful. We need to establish a society of accountability. If you're, uh, if you're employed by the state, you must be held accountable. It's tax money. That is the highest responsibility that you have. And your organization is also advocating that a young South African should be assisted now with entrepreneurship. Are you satisfied yes. uh, with the president's announcement that red tape will be cut uh, for small businesses? First of all, uh, I welcome the fact that he says that. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. We've got... Uh, 
totally private sector driven uh, entrepreneurship programs that we have introduced. The biggest thing that you need to be an entrepreneur is an attitude towards entrepreneurship. And, and money is thrown after people and say, listen, here's a lot of money, become an entrepreneur. If you don't have the attitude towards being an entrepreneur, you can get, get as much money you like, you will not become an entrepreneur. We need to install in our people a desire to care for themselves, to render a proper day's work and then to get to remunerate and do not to waste a minute a day on non-essential stuff, but to be available, to be utilized for the benefit of the broader society and to look after your family, to be proper fathers and mothers and children, useful and productive. We need the message from the top. Mm. And what is your organization's reaction now to the appointment of business leader Siponkosi, who would head a team in the presidency to reduce the unnecessary uh, red tape uh, that hampers uh, business growth in our country? Well, once again, great idea. Please let it happen. Please let it happen. Past experiences say we're great in announcing new initiatives not that good in executing. I'm hopeful, mm -hmm. but I am also somewhat skeptic. I want to mm. see that it's happening. You know, I, I, I've i just worked on a document with the purpose of the budget speech by uh, the Minister of Finance. We've pointed out to the Minister, there was certain things that he said a year ago. But no, he, he wasn't a year ago there, but uh, stuff that was said a year ago by the previous Minister of Finance. But what's happened with this? You know, it's, 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 we're good at announcing a lot of stuff, but what do we do to execute? Real stuff, you know, we need to tackle less things and do it properly. And to, to start, make this long list of all the things that we do and at the end, and you know, uh, it's not happening. The state is losing credibility. And that, that causes the population to, to be um, depressed about the situation. We want to trust our politicians. We want to believe in them. We want to know that when they say something, they will actually do it. So say less and do more. Promise less and do at least what you promised. The recent organization, uh, Mr. Papenfus, that I've interviewed on the State of the Nation address have also indicated that they wish to be part of the talks uh, so that they will also speak directly to, to those uh, in government uh, so that whatever that you wish to see uh, being implemented is done. Is also NIASA feeling the same? Absolutely. What is happening on the ground? What, what, what needs to be filtered through that which needs to reach the, uh, the ears of, of uh, those dealing with this is what is actually happening on the ground? I tell you, people do not have an idea to how many things small businesses, and all business for that matter, but you know, the bigger the business, the easier it becomes. But a small business, a person that's employing 10 people, and he you've gave him this list of stuff that he needs to comply with, with a sword owing over the head, if you don't comply, it's expensive. And it discourages people, and they say, I don't want to do this. So we need to hear from small business. What is it that we can do to assist? And we're not actually small business. And, you know, there's two sectors in small business. Those, there's upcoming ones, there's one thing. Then they are establishable small business. We need to be care for both of them. We need to protect both of them because that's the place where people get employed. We need hundreds of thousands of small businesses employing one, two, and five, and six people growing. Some of them will become big businesses. We need them. And what can we do to make it Make it easier for you. So what we say is, don't prop us up with money. Make it easier for us to do business. Just to some extent, get out of the way. I traveled to uh, recently, you know, quite often to uh, Mpumalanga. And you see places built along, along the road for entrepreneurs, uh, places from where they can trade, but they don't use it. Here's the question. Did you ask them, where do you want the building to be built? <laughs> Why are they trading a kilometer from there? Because you didn't ask. You didn't ask. The place, the facility you've created is in the wrong place. It's because a government official has decided, this is where I want to build it. Well, the entrepreneur says, no, it is not where I want it. it. For good business, you do it in a different spot. Small businessmen don't want your money. They want a friendly environment in which to trade. 
No, I know there might be a place for say, yes, some, yes, some financial, uh, there's a contribution, a loan, or whatever the case may be. The thing that causes businesses and, and, and entrepreneurs to fail is not a lack of resources, it's a lack of energy, it's an attitude problem. If you want to succeed, you will succeed, even if you don't have the money. It's the will to succeed that causes people to succeed, not incentives. So let's unleash the entrepreneurial will in people. Make it easy, make it attractive, and let's make South Africa work again. That was Niasa CEO Harad Papenfus in conversation with Polity about the state of the nation address.